Query tuning is not an easy thing. When you're dealing with a slow query, just think about the number of things you have to do. When a query is running slow, the amount of information that you have to collect, the contextual information, collect it, summarize it, analyze it, comprehend it, start diagnosing, try to identify the root cause of the bottleneck, test it again and again with small data, with large data, try all the different permutations and combinations. It is just overwhelming. Sometimes it is good to be a bit proactive so that you may avoid um, a query performance degradation completely, or maybe even if the degrade happens, you have less work to do. So today I'm going to show you one such strategy that sometimes helps, which is when you are formulating a query. So let's say when you're writing your queries and you're joining multiple tables, you're using your order by clause, the where clause, group by, utilizing some aggregate functions, etc. And when you are writing a query and trying different combinations, and then when you're testing it against the tables that have small amount of data, things run actually pretty good. But when you want to really test the scale of the query, let's say assuming the table had like millions and billions of row, then things go completely wrong. So there are two things to it. One is you actually pump a lot of data into those tables to see how will your query scale up in real production. Or you might just probably inform the query optimizer that you know the tables do not have small data but they actually have large data. This just helps to get an estimation as to what the plan will look like when it is dealing with large data. We'll talk more about this a bit later, but first let me show you what I am exactly talking about. Okay, so this is update statistics with row count. That's the kind of thing that I'm showing you today. I was demonstrating this to a client and they were like, we didn't ever know anything about this. So yeah, maybe this thing is not documented or not supported, but probably something that you can try in your dev or test environment. Okay, so let's see a demo. Let's understand it, what it does, and then we'll talk about it, how it can be useful. Okay, so we are going to use AdventureWorks 2016 for the purpose of demo. Let's do it. Here is a very simple query that I was talking about. So look at this query. It is joining two tables, production.product .product and sales.sales order detail. A very simple query uh, and the join key is product ID. We are doing some mathematics initially. Let's turn on the actual execution plan and let's go and execute the query. So when you execute the query, the query just takes about a second for execution. Jump over to the execution plan and what you see here is it's a very simple plan that you have uh, where you um, the optimizer is uh, scanning the table. OK, this is a product table. We have an index scan, a non clustered index scan going on. And here you have a clustered index scan on the sales order detail. And the data is being joined here using hash match. Couple of things to observe that this is a serial plan here, okay, a single threaded execution. If you take the cursor over the select operator and because it is hash match, I may want to just look at the memory grant. So the memory grant also looks pretty reasonable, just, just um, slightly lesser than 2 MB. Everything is good. Now what I want to do here is first see how many records we have in these tables. So we have production to product and sales order detail. Let's go and execute the count for these two. So we have 504 rows and about 121k row for sales order detail. So this is about 500 and close to 100,000. Now the scenario is such that you're doing all of this in your dev and test environment, right? You're formulating the query, trying different options here and want to get the result out. Now you're dealing with very small tables. What you want to do is blow up these tables, right? Let's say the product table does not have 500 rows, but instead has, let's say 50,000 rows. The sales order detail has currently about 100,000 rows, but let's say you want to simulate a scenario where it has over a million rows. Now, you want to do that simulation and you want to identify how will the execution plan look like if the table had large amount of data. This is what we want to do. So let's 
do this quick trick here. Let me scroll up. Okay, we have this. So what we are going to do is update statistics production dot product with row count 5000. Yes, 500. We changed 500 to 5000. So this is a trick and we do the same with sales order detail and we put about a million rows. So what we're doing is SQL Server already has the stats for these tables, the product table and sales order detail. Amongst many other data items, amongst many other metadata, it knows the row count for these tables. Now what you're doing is you are informing or you're tricking the optimizer and you are saying that, well, the new row count for these tables are 5,000 and a million respectively. Let's go and do that. This is just a technique when you are writing your queries and evaluating multiple strategies and you want to see what will the estimation look like what, what will the execution plan look like when you are dealing with large tables okay now let's go and free the proc cache here remember the earlier plan was using a memory grant of less than 2 mb and it was a serial plan now what we have done is of course we have updated the um, stats for these tables let's go and execute the same query again and let's see how things change we go and execute and okay it's happening there you go it took a bit time of time this it just took about two seconds slightly more and of course it will take more if you kind of simulate more records jump over to the execution plan and now you see a different plan i won't say a different plan from the perspective of the execution but now you see a parallel plan you see more iterators because parallelism gets introduced now so you can see repartition streams and gather streams etc you see multiple threads are running now for this execution and we have hash match here that we saw earlier memory grant will be more so if you go and select the operator here now you will see that uh, this is uh, slightly less than 20 mb about 17 mb memory grant now, another thing you will notice here is the estimations, right? So if we take the cursor over, let's go and do here, look at this. So we had actual number of rows 500 because actual data is still that much, but look at the estimation. This is 5,000 because we changed that in the metadata. We updated stats with 5,000. Likewise, if you look at the sales order detail, actual number of rows are what it is. But if you look at the estimation, it is about a million. This is what we had changed. Now using these tricks, what you can do is look at the estimation that if the number of rows are a lot more, how will the plan look like? How will the plan scale up? What will be the memory grant requirement, et cetera, et cetera. Quite helpful, uh, but of course not really a replacement for actually pumping in huge amount of data but you get a sense of it so uh, trying to pump large number of records into these tables will be a different exercise altogether uh, but initially before you do that even this helps just to get a sense of things all right this is a technique when you're evaluating writing formulating your queries looking at multiple strategies now we need to go back, right? The stats are updated with this uh, new set of uh, uh, data item there, the, num the row count. We got to revert this back to the actual row count. For that purpose, we can use a statement called DBCC update usage, and you can supply the table name with count underscore rows. This is important. Then this is going to update the actual number of rows back, and it will update the stats. Let's go and execute this. If you look um, at the messages, okay, so if you see here, row count changed from 5000 to 504. Of course, this is what we expect and from a million to 121317. Job done. Test it again. Let's free the proc cache and let's go and run the query once more to see are we getting the same plan, the original plan with actual number of rows. Jump over to the execution plan and you see the same plan again. Okay, so this was one of those tricks uh, just to kind of play around when you are evaluating multiple query strategies. Just kind of trick the optimizer with large number of data, more rows, and see what plans does it estimate and what does it really generate. And you can compare the uh, current plan with this so-called future plan and look at 
all the different data items and see if it makes sense. All right, so hopefully you have learned something new. Do put a comment on this video and uh, let us know if this was helpful and what else would you like to see in more upcoming videos. Happy SQL. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there. Video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter, at the rate SQL Maestros, and myself, A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.